Do you like auto attacking? Mwah, that's great. Let me show you a build that you can use only the auto attacks and still win. Right, boys. The build itself goes like this. Hunterhood with the third spell, first passive. Mercenary jacket, same thing, third spell, first passive. You want to have demon boots. I know this might seem weird, but with the recent nerf to the second ability of any played boots, I honestly feel like players should start taking more advantage of this. I might be wrong, from my testing I was quite successful with this build. I've also had some rough matchups, but overall this was a pretty good option, not to mention that you can always swap back to this in case you feel like you need that. But in general I've stayed with this and I did pretty good with this build overall. Alright, for a cape you want the Tedford cape, I'm gonna be explaining what everything does in a second. You want beef stew, I would suggest enchanted, and you want healing potions with resistance potions. Mine are disguised as a bag of silver, trust me, they are resistance potions. As for a weapon, the normal bow with the first Q, second W and third passive. If you don't have this, don't worry, you can even use the first one. This is just the most optimal one in general. Let me explain what each ability does. First of all, the Q. The Q knock knocks back all of your enemies, thus interrupting their spell casting and stuff like that, and it deals damage in an AoE in front of you. This is the Q that you want to be on whenever you're fighting against melee. If you happen to fight a mirror matched, which by the way might very, very well happen, because this is one of the most popular builds right now, you might want to have to swap to this. If you fight against a person that, uh, let's say, it's going to kite you a lot and stuff like that, it's also a good idea to swap to this. There's not really much use for the second Q, besides the first and the third. Like, those are the ones uh, from which you want to go in between. This is good mostly in the open world, if you want to bring this there, but I would still recommend this or this for Corrupted Dungeons. Uh, some players might take advantage of this, but I don't think it's uh, that good of an idea. This Q is a single target Q that automatically locks on the enemy, it looks like this, and it applies a stacking dot that stacks up to three times. This is great in Corrupted Dungeons, especially against Kairos, so you give them a harder time at resetting, and you also have more DPS uh, compared to the other Qs, which is overall a good idea. A good idea. And not to mention that if you're fighting a Kyra, there's no reason for you to knock them back. So that's the main reason you want to swap from this. The W. W looks like this. It slows the enemies that you hit because, yes, you can actually hit enemies with this and it deals 137 damage. Uh, the slow is the main reason you want to use this and the getaway. In general, the priority actually goes from the getaway, the slow, and last but not least, you want to care about the damage. Like, you don't want to wait for the enemy to be nearby and then use this. You want to use this to gain distance straight away if you need that. Like, don't, don't waste it, but don't wait for your enemy to get close to you either. Then you want to have your E. Your E looks like this, and it enchants six arrows. Uh, while having those arrows enchanted, you attack much faster, and you do a whole lot of more damage. A little bit less damage than this build used to do, but still a lot of damage. And considering the fact that this is on a four seconds cooldown, if you activate just the first ability, you're gonna kill enemies very, very fast. But what do I mean by the first ability, or first half of the ability, I should say? Well, if you pay attention to this, you can activate the E twice. You activate it once, and you enchant six arrows and you activate it twice and you enchant four more arrows and you dash a little bit now even though you enchant four more arrows i still have six yes because you can never exceed the number of six arrows so let's say i activate this if i consume four of them and i dash i get four more but if i don't consume any i am always going to be topped off a six this is so uh, that players are not able to just stack up on arrows and then just focus on attacking uh, it's a good change. It's a good change and it makes this build a little bit more interactive. It also offers you a pretty nice uh, bit of mobility. And other than that, you want to have the Bloodlust ability. Now, this ability in combination with your E can heal you up like crazy. Just look at this for a second. Look at this for a second. Because again, this also boosts your auto attack damage. And that's actually how you want to use it. Every single time you deal direct damage up to 7 times, you're going to heal for 97 depending on IP and stuff like that. Now you want to have a somewhat controversial item, which is the Hunter Hood. Some people might not want to use this. I would still recommend that you use this, even though it was heavily nerfed. Because right now it's more of a skill shot. Yes, it requires a little bit more skill to use. But because of the price point and because of the still very strong reflect, I think it's still one of the best options, unfortunately. The Hunter Hood looks like this. It makes you reflect 85% of the damage for 3 seconds. And for those same 3 seconds, it also increases your damage resistances by 55. And this F, pretty complicated to explain, but I'm going to try to make it easy. So, you have a base movement speed that you will activate. Base movement speed that is slower than any other movement speed. So then why do you want to use this? Well... This can turn the tide of the battle whenever you get low, because you see, whenever you get low, every 20% HP that you are missing will add another buff. 
to you. And this buff will make you move 20% faster and it will increase your damage by 5%. So you can stack this up and have a ton more damage if you use this whenever you have low, low HP. And not to mention the mobility itself, it's already enough for this build. So I feel like you could sacrifice on that. Now, some people might disagree with me, in which case, just swap to this. The Tedford Cape makes, uh, makes it so you deal thunder damage every 15 seconds. It's a type of damage that chains between enemies that looks like that. And it's honestly good for DPS, especially as a ranged player. This makes it so you deal more damage overall. And this heals you on a, for, for a certain percentage off of your HP. The general usage of this build, you want to stay as far away as possible with your E, knock the enemies back if you need to, if they got close, you dash, if you ran out of stacks, you reapply your stacks, or if you need to dodge, if you need to heal up, again, combine the E with the R, enemies attacking you with a big damaging spell, defend yourself with this, and whenever you need mobility, or whenever you need more damage, depending on your HP, activate this, and uh, win the fight, and just win the fight. Now, some swaps that you need to be aware of, if you are fighting against a player that can deal a lot of damage and maybe they're also ranged players, it's a good idea to swap to this and to this. In a fight against a healer, I would say you swap to this and to this. This is the biggest damage dealing ability and because the healers don't have a lot of mobility, it's actually a good idea to, to stay on this one. Though some players might also prefer this because of the lower cooldown and the, the locking into place that happens with this. Because this basically... Oh, let, let me show this first. This enchants some arrows and it deals AoE damage. This is also the default that you want to be on for PvE. And in combination with the E, it just makes you attack very fast and deal a ton of damage overall. And this right here is a little bit more of a complicated ability. It's a skill shot, pretty hard to hit skill shot. That looks like this. Let me give, uh, give me three seconds. It looks like this. And it stuns the enemies. It roots actually. It roots the enemy. So it's not a stun, it's a root. But the damage and the root, those are the reasons you want to use uh, this spell. It's honestly a great spell against uh, other Kairas. It's honestly a great spell against other Kairas. And that's about everything you need to know about this build. Now it all comes down to you going in and practicing. Talking about practicing, here's how it went for me. Nice! Nice. Countered. There's so much pressure on me. That's why I'm playing weirdly, chat. There's so much pressure on me going on. Right? I should have interrupted that. There, I have no reason not to interrupt that, actually. But I'm, I, there's just too much pressure on me, chat. You guys bet like 200k channel points on me winning. And you expect me to play well? I mean, I'm playing kind of well, but I'm still messing up a lot. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Does she have double assassin? Perfect. GG boy. GG. Oh, 500k! He used giant boots. He just used giant pot. Oh, I messed up. Oh, I didn't mess up. Very happy about that. I kind of messed up. Was a little bit too confident over there, I guess. But I, I'm gonna... It's full HP gang time. Oh, I tried to cancel that. I really wanted to cancel that. It's fine. Let him have some damage as well. Let's try this chat. That's the rough part. I need to make him commit. He's just gonna run around like this forever.
Perfect, I caught him there. You cannot win this, boy. You cannot win this, boy. Let's go, boy. Watch us play live on twitch.tv slash Mogdan. We decided to finally launch Patreon after seeing so many people willing to help us out. So if you want to help us out, if you want to support our content, please consider joining our Patreons by accessing the link in the description down below. It truly helps us out a lot and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. We love y'all.